Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. I'm Linda Schwartz. I'm the executive director of the National Center for Policing Innovation. And for those of you that are not familiar with NCPI, I'm going to do just a quick commercial for you. We've been around since 1997, and we started out as the Virginia Center for Policing Innovation, and we train law enforcement officers, public safety, and others in public safety all across the country in all 50 states in just about every public safety topic that you can possibly imagine. Um, we've trained about 175,000 law enforcement officers, as a matter of fact. Um, but one of the programs that we are most proud of is the VINE program. We're here today to talk to you about a really important enhancement to that VINE program. But before we get started, if you would please indulge me, I would like everybody to just take a big, deep breath. Now hold it. Hold it. One more minute. Okay, let it out. That feeling of holding your breath and not knowing when you can let go, that's what Virginians all over the state feel when they are waiting to find out whether or not a protective order has been served on their behalf. That anticipation of, I don't know when I can just relax and breathe again, that's what we are addressing with this VPO program, the Virginia Protective Order Notification Enhancement to the VINE system. So when we first started looking at this, we got questions and requests from advocates, court personnel, sheriff's offices, police departments all over the state. Hey, can we add this protective order notification system, this enhancement to the VINE platform? And we started doing a little digging. And I was really surprised when I found out what the advice was for people that had gone to a judge, that had gone before a magistrate and asked for a protective order so that they could feel safe. I was really surprised at what they were told for how they should find out when and if that protective order had been served. They were told to call their local law enforcement agency and ask. And that's all well and good, but if you're trying to build that information into your personal safety plan, that's not very efficient. So that is exactly what we are addressing through this VPO enhancement. What will happen now is that anyone can register to receive an automatic notification. When that protective order is served, they will get a notice on their phone that says it has been served. And they have that information and they can then build it into their safety planning. So we're going to talk about VPO a little bit today, but before we do that, I would like to introduce you to someone who came all this way with a replacement part <laughs> to help us announce this really important program and its launch. Senator Lucas, if you can come up here, I'll talk while she's coming up here. Um, I asked for her bio from her office so that I could properly introduce her and I cannot do that in just any justice in the time that we have today. But um, I would like to say that she has been serving political, social, and civil roles, really, all of your adult life. And 40 she, years. 40 years, <laughs> and she is now um, the chair of Senate Finance and Senate Pro Tem. That's good. And, but the thing that you need to know about Senator Lucas, if you don't already, is that once she decides she believes in something, she's unstoppable. And so for that, thank you. She's thank been a you. huge supporter of Vine for years. So thank, thank you, you Linda. Much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the introduction. And I also thank all of you for coming out this afternoon because this is so extremely important. Uh, today, Linda, I am very pleased to be here for the launch of Vine Protective Orders. Virginia Vine Victim Information and Notification Every Day has been providing important information to Virginians since 2006 with more than 4 million custody notifications sent and nearly 15 million searches for offenders information or to find help across this commonwealth. Each month, thousands of new people sign up for notification about offender custody and the platform continues to grow in use. And now Vine offers another way to support victims in the state through protective orders notification. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, 33% of women in, the, in Virginia and 28% of men experience intimate partner violence 
rape, or stalking in their lifetimes. For someone who is vulnerable, hurt, or in danger, a protective order is so much more than just a piece of paper. It is a sign that they have asked for help. Everyone in this room today understands how important protective orders are in helping someone get out of dangerous situation and to their recovery. Vine protective orders will provide critical updates about when an order has been served and when it is due to expire, allowing not only victims but advocates, family members, law enforcement, and other, supportive of, and other supporters to have that information promptly and directly. Advocates and law enforcement have been asking for additional or an addition in Vine protective services for some time now so they can better serve and support victims across the Commonwealth. Through support from the General Assembly and the Compensation Board, this important service will continue to be available at no cost to anyone who uses it. Vine is administered in Virginia by NCPI, that's the National Center for Police and Innovation, for first started, which first started the program all those years ago in coordination with the Virginia Sheriff's Department, and I think I see the state director here, John Jones, with the Virginia State Sheriff's Office and expanding to uh, other protective orders at the state police level and also protective orders information, ensuring that anyone who uses that Vine link has reliable and timely access to update 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In my work as a state senator and member of the community, I know firsthand the hard work that advocates, law enforcement, volunteers, and court personnel do to support victims in their recovery. And I am pleased to be here to announce this important and long-awaited update to Virginia Vine Services. Linda, I'll turn it back over to you. Now, Linda told you about my, my, my new parts, right? I have a bionic knee. I got, when I go through the airport now, I know the bells and whistles will be going on. You're well, already a lot of fun. Three That's more weeks, I'm throwing this cane away. <laughs> Thank you so much, Senator Lucas. So I, I want to take just a second here to talk about um, how Vine started. We never talk about Vine without telling the story of its origins. Back in 1993, there was a young lady in um, Jefferson County, Kentucky, right, right there in Louisville, if you're familiar with that area, um, who an ex-boyfriend attacked her in her parents' home, raped her. He was arrested. It was a horrible crime. The sheriff at the time told Mary Byron and her family that they would let her know when he was released from jail. Well. We all know how busy law enforcement can get, and it was simply an oversight. And he was released from jail, and he met her in the parking lot where she worked on her 21st birthday, and he shot her multiple times, and he killed her. And it was all over the news in Louisville, Kentucky. This was, again, back in 1993. And two IT guys that lived and worked in the area saw this on the news, and they thought, we can do something about this. And they started the first ever automated victim notification system right there in Jefferson County, Kentucky. And that was way back in the early 90s. And it quickly spread like wildfire all across the country. And now the Vine system covers about 85% of the nation's incarcerated population. So that means in, in about 47 different states, Amy, is that what you said? And Guam and the District of Columbia, that means that someone, a victim, a family member, an advocate, a law enforcement officer is registered against an offender incarcerated to receive automated notices anytime the custody status changes for that particular offender. If they're transferred to another jail, if they are released, if they die, that person is, they've registered for this no cost notification and they're going to get a text message or a phone call or any other notice that they've signed up for and they're gonna have that information in real time. And when I say real time, it's an interface with the jail systems, right? They get that information in about 15 minutes of that person being released or transferred to another facility. 
So it covers about 85% of the nation's incarcerated population. Let that sink in for a second. It's incredible. So Virginia, the state at the Department of Corrections level, has had this system in place for a long time. But back in 2006, John Jones at the Virginia Sheriff's Association partnered with then the Virginia Center for Policing and Innovation, and we got a grant to bring it to Virginia's local and regional jails. That was all the way back in 2006. And that was a startup implementation grant, and we have grown that program over the years to what it is today. Um, the state has continued to fund it because it is so utilized by Virginia. So back in 2006, in the very beginnings, by the way, we have 100% participation in all the local and regional jails. But back in 2006, you know that year, we sent out just under 23,000 notifications on custody status changes for offenders. Last year, in 2023, we sent out over half a million. Isn't that incredible? Let me, let me put another way to think about this. Last year, in 2023, we had 100,000 people sign up to receive notifications. That's, we're averaging somewhere between eight and 9,000 new registrants a month to get this information. This program is phenomenal. The technology behind it, you can see all those little red flashes coming up. That's every time a custody status notification is being sent out. The technology is phenomenal, but it's being used just the way it should be, and that's the part that's really tremendous. So we were able to add on to the Vine system, and there's a lot more that Amy will tell you about in just a little bit. But we're able to add on to the Vine system this protective order notification because an awful lot of people asked for it. Some of them are in this room. Thank you for coming. All the uh, victim advocates and the Commonwealth Attorney's Office personnel, and we've got court personnel that were asking for this for a long time, law enforcement. Is a long time coming. Senator Lucas, thank you for coming all this way to announce it. But we also, we have a team here from the state police. We would not be standing here today without the support of all of you, from Senator Lucas as well, but also from our friends at the state police um, department. And we want to give a special shout out to Lieutenant Gunderson, who's not here today, right? Lieutenant Cook and First Sergeant Michael DeBoss. I'm so sorry. I was ready to go with your name, <laughs> DeVos. Thank you. And their whole team. And Shana, Shauna, Shana, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the work that you guys did to bring this across the finish line. Um, the technology interface is not a simple thing, and it took a huge team and a huge effort to get this across the finish line. So thank you very much for that. Um, I would like to now introduce you to Amy Sheets. She is the NCPI program manager for all things Vine. She joined us back in 2017, just before we did an, a complete overhaul, technology overhaul to the entire Vine platform. And she stayed with us through that enhancement and several others since, and then this um, enhancement with protective orders. And if you'll come up here, Amy, um, She's been a cheerleader and uh, manager for this program all these years, seven, eight years. I can't do that yes. math in my head. Seven. seven. Okay. Seven. Thank you. So I'd like to turn it over now to Amy to give you a demo of the system. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, it's so nice to see so many folks here that I, I've worked with virtually for years and seen at conferences. So thank you for, for coming today as for my advocate um, colleagues. So. Um, as Linda said, my name is Amy Sheets, and I'm the Vine Program Manager for the state of Virginia. I'm going to give just a very brief presentation about Vine and VPO, just covering again how it works and how to use it in very general terms. But do please feel free to come up to me after the presentation if you have questions or want to jump on the laptop, and we can go through it, um, and I can show you how to use it um, for yourself. All right. Let's see if this is going to work. Brittany, can you forward it, advance it? So as Linda said, we always do every Vine training or presentation um, with a, a beginning mention of Mary Byron. I won't tell her story here again, but she really is our touch point for everything that we do with Vine and Vine Protective Orders. All the work that we do comes back to that central uh, point of 
helping survivors in their recovery and to make sure nobody gets hurt again. That's at the heart of everything that we do and that's the undercurrent of, um, of this particular project as well. So what is Virginia Vine? Uh, simply put, uh, Vine is going to provide free email, uh, phone, and text notifications about offender custody status and now um, protective order information as well. So how does it work? As Linda mentioned, we have an interface um, device connection with every single um, local and regional jail in their jail management system or their booking system. And now with protective orders, we have um, a direct interface with the main um, information network through the Virginia State Police to get that access uh, for protective orders. As soon as booking occurs at the local or regional level or as soon as there are a is a change to a protective order, we get that information through a virtual real-time interface with the jails and an information transfer with the state police with their information network and we um, have that information ready and accessible in Vine. Then a person who wants that information would access Vine either through going to vinelink.com the 1-800 number, the Vine app, or virginiavine.org, which is our local site. That person would then sign up to be notified. Then if there's a change to that information at the, joke, at the local regional level, at the courts level, or with law enforcement at, uh, regarding an entry of a protective order um, update, a service expiration update, that information will be pulled, compared against anybody who's got a registration, and then a notification will be sent out. So that's how that works. So starting with how to search for protective orders. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Vine, this is not anything new, but you'll go to the Virginia Vine page on vinelink.com, you'll choose Virginia. You may also choose any one of the other states that participate in Vine. So if you're looking for information on an offender in North Carolina, for example, you may also sign up to get notification um, for another state. But if we go into Virginia Vine, we'll search, uh, choose search for someone, which is the button on the far left. Okay. okay, you'll choose protective order under the search, I am searching for a protective order. You do need to select the county or the city of issuance of the protective order. You'll select that from the drop down menu. You'll enter the respondent's first and last name. You do need to have their full name. This is different than an offender search where you can do a partial search. You'll need the first and last name. You'll, you'll need the protective order in its entirety. And that's entered with any letters that are attached and no punctuation. So you'll leave a dash out if there's a dash. You will then pull up a tile, very much like an offender notification that has the name of the person who's holding that, the respondent in that protective order. You'll have some verifying information about the number so you can make sure that that is in fact the right protective order. And then if you want to get notified, you'll select get notified on the lower right hand side. And I said lower left and I realized that, but I am really bad with right and left. Uh, Vine protective orders is slightly different than Vine uh, link for offender data and the reason for this is we do ask for people to create an account to be notified. The reason for that is we want to make sure that we're getting the right people the right information. A respondent in a protective order does not need to know that expiration date. But we do want the protected person to know. We want core personnel, law enforcement to know. So we are asking people to self-identify when they create the account. They will choose from the protected person an act advocate, law enforcement or court personnel, respondent or a concerned citizen. And they will get the corresponding information um, once they select that. Then they will ask how they be, want to be notified. If they want a phone call, email, text, we do still provide notice by, uh, for TTY um, or an in-app notification as well and they'll create a PIN. Once they create an account, they will get a confirmation notification, either a phone call, email, or text, depending on what they ask for. Their account is not active until they get that confirmation email. Okay. So the sample of types of notifications that we're going to be providing. We will be providing information on preliminary and permanent or final orders only. We're not doing emergency protective orders. We'll be providing information on when they have been served, advance notice of expiration and then when they actually expire. And then for offender data, we still, as always, will be providing information on offender release or transfer, um, if they escape, if there's any other custody status change, we'll be providing that information as well. And Linda mentioned this as well, but I want to bring this up now, that we have, um, last year there were um, over 99,000 registrations in the state. We sent out 560,000 plus notifications. 
there were 3.7 million searches. And there are people that we know don't want to get notified. They don't want to be triggered by that text or they don't feel it's safe. So they go in every single day before they leave for work and search for an offender to see where that person is before they start their day. So those searches also represent people seeking information about a custody status or to be connected with support or help in their uh, communities during their recovery. And the last thing I want to mention is we do have a customer service center. It's staffed 24 hours a day by actual humans that are trauma informed. And you can call that number at any time, day or night, to be connected with a person to get information, to get registered for Vine, to ask a question about a status, to report an issue if there's something going on. That uh, line also serves multiple languages. So if you have a customer or a person that you're working with whose first language isn't perhaps English or Spanish or another language that your office serves, you can be connected with the customer first center and ask to be uh, connected to an operator who speaks that language. So we just want to point that out. Okay. We created some years ago the vavine.org website, and that is a way to get direct access for Virginia-specific information. Everything from videos that you can watch to an online course to request training or materials from me. There's no cost for any of it. We have downloadable resources as well as frequently asked questions on that site as well. So that's a good place to start, and that will also take you to Vine link to register. So that's another way to access the service. Um, and before we conclude, again, I just want to thank everybody here. I want to thank Senator Lucas for her support for Virginia Vine and VPO and her staff as well. And thank you to the advocates. It's been a privilege working with you this many years. And I know firsthand just the tireless work and the Herculean efforts that you do every day. And I just want to say how much I appreciate it. And thank you. And certainly, last but not least, to the Virginia State Police. This, this has been an unbelievable effort. Um, and when I say we couldn't have done it without you, literally we could not have done this without you. So thank you again for your, for your help. Um, so this concludes the program. We'll be available for any questions. If you would like materials, if you want to talk to me about a training, please do so. Um, and we will have um, things up there. If there's something up there that you want more of, please let me know. Or if you want children's items, I'm happy to get that for you as well. Thank you so much for coming.